There's a big change in the middle of the sixth century when one man seizes control of the government as what the Greeks called a tyrant. The story of how this tyrant or sole ruler came to power has been preserved by the historian Herodotus. One day, a man of dignified and noble bearing rode into the city of Athens. Beside him stood a tall and beautiful woman. A woman he claimed was the patron goddess of Athens, Athena. This dashing figure demanded that he be given the rule of Athens, for like one of Homer's heroes, he had the protection of a goddess. Surprisingly, he was welcomed by the Athenians as their new ruler. Despite the fact that the goddess was simply a particularly tall girl from a neighboring village. And the heroic figure was an ordinary man called Pisistratus, Pleisthenes' own brother-in-law. Pisistratus was, I think, an excellent politician. He was a man without doubt, with an eye for the main chance. But as he consolidated his rule, it became clear that Pisistratus had far greater ambitions than simply gaining power. Pisistratus was an extremely intelligent man. He clearly understood that if he was going to maintain control of Athens, if he was going to be able to consolidate his rule and pass it on to his sons, which is clearly his ambition, he would have to find allies. Pisistratus took an extraordinary step. He turned to the common Athenians for support undermining the whole hierarchy of aristocrats and commoners that had endured for centuries. Isistratus reduced taxes and introduced free loans to allow the people to build up their farms. And by offering the Athenians the chance of prosperity, Isistratus began to transform his city. With the rise of Pisistratus, we start to see the success of agrarianism accelerated at Athens. And that's going to be a kernel that's going to grow and grow and grow in the ensuing two centuries. And one of the results of that is we see more vines.